Can I? So I know Nina and Jeff have both seen this on my Twitter, but can I tell you all the story of why I did not sleep much last night? Sure. Yes. Perfect. Great. Thank you for your permission. Um, so for the audience, um, the Batman came out this weekend. Fun movie. Mm-hmm. Good time. Um, I, so goofy. I wanted to see it, but I did not want to see it alone. So I invited my mom and my brother to see it with me. And the only time oh, yeah. my mom could really do it was early in the morning because she works like afternoon slash nights. So mm-hmm. um, I got us tickets for a 10 a.m. showing on Sunday morning. So very early showing. Um, I decided since my mom would have to rush off to work afterwards that we would just do, there's literally, um, a movie theater within walking distance of my brother's house. So, and that's currently where my mom is staying. So I got the tickets there. I was like, Mm -hmm. I'll take the Metro and everything up to your house and I'll stay there the night before so I can just wake up and we can head to the movie theater. So Yeah, a classic good movie theater move. Classic good movie theater move. Well, um, I have stayed at my brother's house once before, um, and it's not my favorite place to sleep because it's haunted. Um, so my brother bought this house it's maybe been almost about a year at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, And after he bought the house, the owner of the house came by like around when my brother was like moving in and the owner was just like showing him around, showing him some of like the quirks of the house, like helpful little things. And during this little tour, um, he told my brother, Oh, by the way, uh, the house is also haunted. Um, And my brother was like, no, I know that. I know that's not something you legally have to disclose, like a murder. And uh, was it here that we like looked into like what places you can get away with not disclosing murders? I want to say it was here. I yeah. can't remember if it was this podcast or a different one. It's possible. But, like, I know that you don't have to disclose the house is haunted, but like, it's a bit I of a like bro it's, move. It it's only like <laughs> it's common courtesy, thing. right? Yeah, but like he was like, we haven't had any problems with the ghosts. Um, it used to make a lot more noise. Um, but then eventually I went out and was like, hey, can you please quiet down a bit? Uh, we're trying to sleep. And that ever works. since then, it's been more chill. So fuck? here's the story of the I ghost. Um, the owner had a lot more stories of the different haunting encounters he had with the ghost. So far, um, The main thing that happens or has happened since my brother moved in is footsteps and there's this closet on the second floor. It's like half the size height wise of a normal closet. Just this really small, weird closet. And it has a latch door, um, which the mechanism is it's got kind of like a normal kind of door handle. You push the button to Mm -hmm. open it. But the button leads to this like iron latch where it lifts and kind of like curves down into a locking mechanism. So it does not accidentally open. Ever. I, yeah, I can't um, can attest. Have seen this door. It does not accidentally open. Does not accidentally open. Sh- it should stay shut once you have latched it. Yes. So this door um, has a habit of opening on its own most nights, uh, randomly. And then after it opens, generally you'll hear footsteps on the stairs, like kind of walking up and down. Oh, it's haunted by Harry Mm -hmm. Potter. (laughs) I guess so, yeah. He lives in a closet. (laughs) Yeah, perfect. And then he walks up the stairs. (laughs) So I'm not like nervous that this ghost is going to do anything or anything like that. My biggest concern was... You know, I'm going to be sleeping there. Um, I'm going to hear footsteps or anything. I'm going to open my eyes. There's going to be a full body apparition of some little girl standing there watching me. And my phone's battery is going to be dead. Um, 
But you don't want to miss luckily, that chance. <laughs> miss that chance. But uh, during the night, it was like really windy in the area, and it just the house was making a lot of noise anyway because of the wind. But um, during the night, I think I heard the closet door open, like somewhere around probably like two or three a.m. Um, I just heard the creaking of a door like really slowly. Um, but then I didn't hear any footsteps or anything, but every time the house made a noise, I was like, is that the ghost? And my heart would kind of like beat a little bit faster. Uh, yeah. so it was really hard for me to fall asleep. You um, but have, uh, called upon the powers of the Lord to keep the ghost. <laughs> <today>. Obviously. <laughs> That's true. So doesn't um, he have like a crucifix and a half in every single room? Come on, amateur hour for haunted houses. What is no, this? Like, oh, tragically, <laughs> instead, my brother has well had a magnet on his refrigerator that said <laughs> anal is magic. Um, <laughs> do you think that was helping or <laughs> <laughs> honestly, you gotta ask, was. did it get worse before or after you took it away? <laughs> yeah, well, so anyway. So eventually I fell asleep. It was probably the last thing I remember or the last time I remember looking at the clock, it was about 3.13. So I probably fell asleep around like 3.30, 3.45. Um, mm -hmm. So really late. Uh, I was planned. I had my alarm set for like 9 a.m. 9 um, and so in the morning, I woke up to footsteps like right on the other side of the couch. And there were like yeah. really loud, very noticeable footsteps. Um, and so I was like, oh, I opened my eyes. There's a little bit of light coming through the window. It's still like really early morning though. And I'm like, maybe I slept through my alarm or my alarm just didn't go off. Uh, cause sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. And my mom, that's my mom like coming to like check on me to go to the movie. Yeah. So I sit up expecting my mom to be there and just to say, Hey, um, Sit up. Nobody's there. I'm like, cool. I check my phone at 615. Great. Now I have to fall back asleep when there was just a ghost on the other side of the fucking couch. <laughs> um, so I lay back down. I didn't hear any other footsteps, um, but I had some gnarly other like dreams about other haunting bullshit happening. But wow. those obviously didn't happen, but the footsteps definitely did. And it was just a bit of a creepy morning. Um, wow. But then eventually I got up and saw the Batman and it was a good time. New Mike Flanagan show coming soon. The haunting of Emma's brother's house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was going to come in here and complain about the dream that I had last night, which was just about texting somebody that I didn't want to text. But um, I, I guess I'll stay quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so privileged having visited this haunted house and seen the door that definitely should stay closed. Yeah, I forgot that we had taken you there. Yeah, only yeah. briefly because we went out to dinner afterwards. Mm -hmm. We got that good food. It was so good. <laughs> highlight of the night, food. S secondary highlight of the night, ghost. Ghost. Um, creepy, creepy ghost door. <laughs> creepy ghost store. Wait, so it's the, a nice house otherwise there's just a lot of wood paneling does the ghost uh, have a name the only, oh that's, that's haunting the with it yeah doesn't she huh does the ghost, doesn't have, the a ghost name? have a name seems I thought like a ghost that, should I, I thought oh your brother god named her. so um my brother's ex named her mm. um oh right uh, i don't remember what Rip. the name was um okay. and i think the owner had a different name for her but I I don't I don't fucking know. Okay. Well, she'll maybe she'll tell you her name one day. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not. Night. I am. He's good. spending the night, and maybe you'll get the privilege. Say, I hope that you never have to go through that because that sounds fucking terrifying. Can you just imagine like little spooky girl voice being like, "Hi, Emma. Actually, my name's, my name's <laughs> Susan." <laughs> no way, my little ghost voice. No way, my name's Emma. <laughs> <laughs> honestly if that um, happened i'd just bro down with the ghost probably yeah yeah It'd be like twinsies
whenever Welcome you're ready. Casual upset. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Casual Obsession Horror Movie Podcast, the horror movie podcast where we talk about horror movies a little bit later at night than we usually do, so I've got to be quiet so as not to disturb my upstairs neighbors. I actually don't we know do if like they're even ASMR home right voices. Now. I don't know what their schedule is. I haven't been able to figure it out. I've never talked to either of them. I don't even know if there's a bedroom above me or if it's an office, but I'm not taking any chances. How do I you really know they exist the, at all? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I really love Thank that you. your default for a late night episode voice is to get all smooth and late night talk radio. I'm not trying to do whereas that. Whereas my actually. idea of a late night voice was uh, to turn into a late night shock jock radio. See, that's what I was thinking when you were talking about doing a late night thing for the other podcast. And I was thinking what Jeff did, which is like the jazz radio. Like, Okay, again, I'm not going for the jazz radio thing. I'm just trying to talk quietly the way that you would on the phone with somebody. When you're trying not to disturb others, you know, it is 9 p.m. Currently. So the, the like introduction of like, welcome to the Casual Obsession Horror Movie Podcast. Oh, yeah. The horror movie. Po- that yeah, wasn't that's, on that purpose. That is kind of what I was doing, wasn't it? That was not intentional. Mm. All right. Well, well I'm that established. Hours. In any case, I <laughs> well, am I'm host, Emma. Jeff, and you may <laughs> and, Yeah. My oh, my co-host, God. I'm Emma, Noah. And, <laughs> and Nina and... Uh, <laughs> What did you say your name was? Emma. No, no, not you. <laughs> oh, that's Nina. God we watched it. Suspiria this week. <laughs> Hell yeah, we did. Oh my god, this is a train wreck. Um, the beginning's so always Suspiria. a train wreck. Suspiria <laughs> is an uh, a, a movie by Dario Argento that he put out in 1977 in which an American ballet student arrives at a school in Germany uh, to uh, get more good at ballet. Uh, But upon arriving, she is refused entry and witnesses another student uh, fleeing the school in terror, who is then uh, murdered. And that's how the movie opens up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was this... No um... no spoilers, because that's all within like the first five minutes. Yeah, I was really surprised to see Tilda Swinton in this. Was this like her first movie? It's one of them. So this yeah. was like really early, right? She's immortal, so it's really hard to keep track. Yeah, one and forever, Tilda Swinton. Amen. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. Um, Jeff, do you do you want me to give the reviews? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Have this also, do for for any of our listeners who are not planning on watching the movie, Tilda Swinton was not in this movie in 1977. Wait, yes, yeah, she was. She was in the version I watched. <laughs> Did you Damn. actually watch the 2018 no. one? No. <laughs> I, I, I started to. I started to. I was like, this would be a fun bit. Just to like go for a minute. The hardest um, possible follow up to just not yeah. watching Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> watching the same movie, but wrong. Yeah, but, the, but the remake. Um, so, Noah, no, I to like. Me. What's up? I looked it up on Amazon and then I saw a poster that I would describe had to be from the Mm, seventies. Um, and so I was like, this must be it. So I started watching it and then I was like, you know how on Amazon prime, like when you're watching something, it'll show like what actors and are in the scene. And so in the beginning it was showing like Chloe Grace Moret Moretz. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, oh, Something's this is this must here. have been a really early film for her. And I was like, wait, there's no <laughs> fucking way she was alive in the 70s. Like it's honestly it's like, shocking how much more version. the original Suspiria poster, it's shocking how much more modern that one looks than the really like not tacky complimentary uh style of the 2018 remake, you know? Yeah. Uh, are you it, talking the remake is so one? busy? Yeah, that one. Yeah. It's like that's such a classy, like very minimal Isn't black, that, white, and red. That's it's that nice. guy. Um, that artist that did the poster, Jeff just showed a poster that's a very minimalist, um, minimalist poster. I got compared to that artist really? for a candy band poster that I did. Oh wow. um, yeah. It does have that, and that kind of a look. Yeah. I uh Redbubble customer compared me to that artist and I have not yeah. uh recovered since. <laughs> that's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten yeah. in my life. 
Oh, it, I see. There is another one. There is another picture for Suspiria that has just a, a screamy face. And then there's some other stuff. I have never seen those posters before. I've only ever seen the minimalist one. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but anyway, you know what I have also seen is I've seen some reviews and that's what I'm going to talk and about right now. what were those reviews saying about it? Or ratings? Well, rather. those reviews. Oh, I guess I'll talk about the ratings instead of the review. <laughs> you can talk about reviews uh, as I well. Am... I was going to bring that up, but imdb has this sitting pretty at a 7.4 out of 10 rotten tomatoes at a 93 okay. percent metacritic at 79 and letterboxd at four out of five or 80 percent that's very high yes yes it is mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm glad it's like pretty consistent across the board it's nice to see that it's at least a, a generally like consistent consensus i was checking the uh the letterboxd reviews for it um and they were it, it, you don't often actually see a lot of like really unidirectionally loaded uh, reviews, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially for, uh, how do I sell, spell Suspiria? For the love of God. It's exactly how I can't how spell anything right. I know, I yeah. put an E in there and it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> anyway, though, yeah, this is it's sitting with like, its first major lump of reviews starts at two stars and that's only 2%. Like it's real, like true pickup is at three star and up. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people seem to rate it four stars though. Okay. That works. That's uh, nice. I think there's like all said and done uh, totaled together. There are less than 5,000 ratings that are two stars and less out of um, 248,000 ratings. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. But the movie has been around for a while, though, yeah. so it's given mm-hmm. a lot of people time to watch it. It does certainly uh, benefit a little bit from the nostalgia bump uh, as well, I think. I, honestly, I'm not sure how much it does, because I watched it again this time um, being ready for, like, frankly, a bit of a drag. Uh-huh. Firstly, some of the things that I thought were a drag turns out. It's in the other movie. It's in the remake. Oh. And I for, like there's that there's a long section where we follow a detective. And it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's not it's kind this. of a drag that is not in this movie. And I forgot that um, I thought it was in this one because I'm like, oh, yeah, the, the new one was paced so well. No, it has like 30 minutes that could be cut of a boring detective sequence of an old man traveling around. This one that does sound like Argento. Though. I am uh, right to see that's what that's what threw me. Like it's on but brain. this one, I enjoyed it a lot more this second time around than I did the first time around. Oh, yeah. I think I enjoy it more every time that I watch it legitimately. But also it has some problems. Oh, yeah. But know what? If you were to give it like a number rating, what would you say? Yeah, if you like it. Well, I would say if I were to give it a number rating like four years ago, Uh I'd probably have given it a seven. But today I give it an eight because Wait, I'm what? bumping that review up for some of the practical effects. In Joe Biden's why, America, why four Suspiria years ago? gets an eight. <laughs> uh, the last time I watched it was about four years ago. Oh, okay. I watched it gotcha. when the new one came out because I wanted to watch the new one. I mm. watched it on Tubi then as well, ironically enough. Mm, yeah. Oh, that's fun. I think Argento just has all his movies on Tubi. That's the where I'm like, like I need to get my movies to the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Emma, uh, what about you, though? What would you rate this movie? Since hard, you asked me, you know, that's a great question. And I have a hard time with that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some genuinely hilarious moments in this horror comedy. There, um, <laughs> there really are some funny moments. <laughs> in it. Yeah. Um, the dialogue leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> just a little. I actually have some trivia about that, too. I tried very hard to get rid of my old movie anti-prejudice uh, for mm-hmm. this watch. <laughs> Um, Did it work? I tried very hard. M- maybe a little. Okay. Maybe a little. Hey, I'll take maybe a little. Um, I didn't hate it. Okay. I think there are a number of things I didn't like, such as pacing. Um, mm-hmm. I think That's a little weird. Like the first three fourths of the movie, you have no idea really, kind yeah. of what the movie is about, and then suddenly, like the last fourth. <laughs> It's like fast and oh, furious. Yeah. Here's here's, <laughs> here's the kind way, of like what's exist. happening. Yeah, here's yeah. all your information for the entire movie and now everything's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um like I understand the concept of like some movies it gives you hints of the weird things that are going on kind mm-hmm. of behind the scenes to whatever the main character is seeing. Yeah. Um that keep you kind of intrigued. 
But for some reason, the little hints that this did give us just didn't really affect me at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. They just didn't stand out, really. It doesn't give you a lot of information I was just to like, put together. Yeah, I was just like, oh, this is a movie about a girl going mm -hmm. to ballerina school. Um, and oh, now there's witches. Um, <laughs> yep. It's clear so, Emma didn't listen to the soundtrack when it looked her in the face and said, witch. It's, it's <laughs> like the, the TikTok sound that's like the Squidward's Tiki Lab, but it's literally, it's literally like that, except it's just Goblin going, witches, yeah. witches. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Well, but no, if you that's, think that's the super exposition in this movie leaves something to be desired, just you wait until I make you watch the sequel to this movie, Inferno, oh, no. where it tells you even less. I'm not less. watching that. I'm not watching that. <laughs> I don't, don't want to so, do that. The best part is that at the Emma, end of Inferno, the main character also knows nothing. Oh, beautiful. That's so great. he's oh, just like, like what's more. going on here? And everyone that he encounters is like, I'm sure you know who I am. And he's like, what? No. Will you tell me what's going on? <laughs> Emma, please, please give your number rating so I can give my number rating. Oh, yeah. Fair I enough. I think yeah. like uh, 6.25. Oh, my God. That is like. I think that's super that's reasonable. Higher that is than like honestly, you know what? <laughs> I was expecting from that's you. Probably that's probably so much better than I was hoping. Emma's Argento yeah. expectations were like through the floor after Phenomena. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and this was worlds better than Phenomena. It's honestly, it's so much better than It's Phenomena. way more watchable. Oh, it's way better. It's so much better. If Phenomena's the main character sucks. of this, if they, if Dario Argento tried to pitch me some bullshit of like, oh, the main character when dancing ballet controls caterpillars, then I'd be out. Yeah. And that was the B plot, like, <laughs> no, as in so Phenom Phenomena. <laughs> yeah. And it's just never explained. It's just there. Or that's never the, explored. Like, it's not even the point of phenomena. It's a beat no. Plot there's that not even a reason to have it happen. I was. Oh I was yeah, I talked to bugs. It's why? So while, weird. while I was watching this, me and um the artist that I'm working with, Carson Druitt, um, were hanging out in a call, and he was working. I was watching the movie, and we were talking a bit about Dario Argento because he's seen, um, both the classic version of this movie and the remake. Hmm. Um, and I was talking about Phenomena and he hadn't seen that. And so I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's about this girl kind of like moving to a boarding school and there are murders happening. And the B plot is that she also controls bugs. Um, but they never explore that really. She just does it. <laughs> the C plot is a very shiny knife. Yeah. But that's absolutely. just Argento. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, 6.25, I think. Okay. Uh, Nina, what do you think? think? Yeah, uh, also when we get into like discussion, I'm going to need some help with some of the plot points. Um, oh, sure. So my my rating's going to suffer because since we watched this on Tubi and uh, it's a well-known fact that I have an attention deficit disorder, um, <gasps> I after every like big, cool special effects death or scene, there were no less than two full minutes of action. Ads. I, um, oh, I have yeah. never seen ad breaks <laughs> that are placed as poorly as these ones. I went to the local video store that I used to work at today um, <laughs> for multiple reasons. Video. And they sell the DVD copy there brand new for $24. Ooh, and I heavily considered buying it and bringing it back home to watch it and recover. <laughs> but then I was like, no, that, that's a little too much money. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, other than like, so I'm trying to be generous because that really took me out of it and um, upset me. But other than that, uh, more watchable than Phenomena. Um, main character, I actually really like her. Um, uh, I'm gonna give this one. I would a hard six and a half, okay. seven ish. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I respect. I respect. Oh, so they're selling it for I, cheap. We're on Amazon now. I, I'm seeing Amazon sells it for like twenty to thirty dollars as well. Uh, um, this is the Blu-ray. They're selling the DVD cheaper. Just a little though. It's the convenience I, man. Fuck. What was I gonna say? Oh well. Too bad. <laughs> Jeff, what did you think? I, I mean, this is your movie, so I know you like this movie, but I do. I like it more every time I watch it, as I said previously. Um, I actually watched it once on a TV and once like with headphones and such. And I actually think 
while it's nice to look at it on a bigger screen because you know the movie is so much more into being a visual spectacle than it is anything else that's why the plot is so simple and the characters are barely there Mm -hmm. um yes simple plot i really liked having headphones on for all those like which you know like I just thought, to hear all of that. I thought that was the. I didn't realize that was part of the music score. I thought in order to cast spells and things, the witches had to say witch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, no spoilers, but you get to the end of the movie, and that's almost true. <laughs> kinda, yeah. <laughs> like and like, I mean, like that's a kind of a consistent problem with goblin soundtracks, is you can never tell what sounds are diegetic and which ones aren't. Like, there's one scene in this movie where uh, the characters are telling each other to, like, listen closely for something, and you can't tell if the sound that they're listening to is part of the music or if it's actually yeah. just oh, a thing yeah. that's happening. Yeah. yeah. There's, like, the wailing in this one scene. And, oh, yeah. Like, there's, like, a bunch of wailing and crying out and gnashing of teeth in the background to get biblical, and then the character's like, do you hear that? And she's referring to another character's soft snoring. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm just like, I don't know, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, and Man, it's, that's the most choked snoring, though. Like someone's standing on her windpipe. Right? That's like, well, and no, it's I'm also, don't be mean to me. <laughs> it's also kind of like that with the lights as well, right? Like you've got all this mm-hmm. crazy colored lighting all over the mo- spoilers for the movie. There's crazy colored lighting everywhere. Um, yeah. And for the most part, the characters just ignore it. Like, you know, like you're supposed to assume that that's something we're seeing. They're not seeing it. But there is one moment. I actually only just noticed it. uh, My more recent watch a couple of hours ago. There is a moment where Sarah reacts to a change in the lighting. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. a light on that's getting projected onto the wall next to her changes and she reacts to it. So like, I don't. I don't know how to read Is that when that. people are walking? I don't know what to do about that. No, it's during the part where um, she's, where she's like, like going through the hallway. Like Susie's right? asleep and Sarah's doing her investigating by herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the blue lit shots. The light that she reacts oh, yeah. to is kind of like inconsistent. It's kind of like swirled. It moves a little bit. Mm-hmm. And she like she acts like she actually sees it. And that's not that the only wild. time that that kind of thing happens. But like. Yeah. See, Argento movies are really weird because they feel almost like stage plays where like mm. I don't know how much of what the character is interacting with is diegetic like from the everything from the um lighting to the music to even the set design like those those rooms especially like the apartments that people live in are oh, yeah. really like Very over-designed. Stage-y. Yeah. Yeah. And I I don't know that I believe that that's what the characters are seeing almost if that makes sense yeah yeah you know yeah totally but um, just kind of a, in well, an interesting so way here's the thing i no wait i've got to stop myself now because i'm getting into the <laughs> trivia and fun facts section that your mortal mind will not comprehend on this movie um but oh i'm God, getting ahead of already. myself i still have not given I'm, a numerical rating for this movie we've got to I was get gonna into say, the spoilers have you dropped a number before yet? i can do that i am giving this movie spoilers a nine a because I Nine. love it. I will not nice. You're so attempt to defend its um, dialogue problems or any or uh, most <laughs> of the acting or yeah. <laughs> any of that. But I will say <laughs> that I love it and I think it's good. <laughs> yeah. Before we get too far away from um, the conversation of the not really understanding as a viewer if the characters can hear certain sound effects or see the weird lights yeah um i did want to mention one of the funniest parts of the movie for me (laughs) um is at the beginning Mm, where our main character uh flies into germany from america (laughs) and she's in the airport and we see her like walking out of the airport the camera's focused on her and then the camera changes to like look at the front door and there's a big storm outside and the music is very like kind of ominous and eerie and then it like yeah. switches back to her and she and looks like silent. really concerned and afraid and it just the music cuts off and then it switches it's back so the music good. picks up again and then it switches back to her and the entire time I'm like 
can she hear what this fucking music? Here? And um, then she walks through the she door. She seems to be reacting to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just they really very, fucking funny. They show us the very important shot of the the door to the like fucking airport unlocking and the mechanism opening. Yeah, like it. the piston moving. We needed it to and... right. Yeah. I was so worried that that was gonna be something, and then it wasn't. Yeah. Why did we get you that know? shot? Well, I mean, that's the Just story of half the movie, isn't it? There's well, an awful lot see, of events and characters that, like, by the time they're done, you're just like, well, what was the point of that? You you couldn't, yeah, you could fair. barely hear it, but when it was showing the automatic door, like, functioning and everything, oh my God. and the music, it actually said, which, really course, quietly, because automatic have. doors work via magic. Naturally. How yeah. else would they work? Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Um... Jeff, talk yeah. about spoilers. I have. I want to well, talk. No about way. Before we I can talk about spoilers. For we fuck's sake, talk about Noah. We've got other is. steps. Jesus, for Noah. fuck's sake, on, Jeff. For we've got sake, other Noah. steps. We need what? to talk about trigger oh, warnings. I thought we talked God about damn, whether the movie was scary before we could talk about trigger. No, warnings. it's always been trigger nope. warnings. Then no, if I the had movie's a, scary, I had a note then spoilers. That's on me. Okay, my bad. My bad. Trigger warnings. Honestly, at this point. At this point, it's more of a running gag that we're not getting. I, keep I try up to the do order. it. I do. Is try it because to you guys it. legitimately get confused every single time? Let's let's. Uh, let's this time I misinterpreted one of my notes. Let's content warn this warning. There's a lot of fake it. blood let's in this warn movie. This content. It's so much borderline fake blood. offensively fake it's blood, so fake. but like there's yeah. a lot of it's it. Like so orange like orange or pink. Yeah. yeah, it's as fake as I the remember... glass of wine that gets dumped down the sink later in the movie. Oh yeah, no, it's exact. In fact, it's probably it's like exactly oh, it's the same liquid. Are you kidding me? They liquid. didn't. <laughs> it's like they didn't pink even in the sink, but like because I remember wasn't hearing wine. a while ago that they had to make blood look like that so it showed up properly on film. So like in person, it was like orange. And it's opaque so that it reflects the light enough. Okay. But they needed to do that because a, of the amount of lighting on set. I'm going to cut you off right here. You are dangerously <laughs> close to encroaching on the trivia fun facts section. And if you if you <laughs> say one more syllable, I'm going to have to, like, I don't know, jump through your window and, like, I don't know, hit you with a... You could um, easily do something. that too. Yeah. You just got the you guys on the podcast because none of the rest of us know how to edit. You're just gonna hear worried silence and then 20 minutes from now you'll hear the glass crash. <laughs> I shall say we'll not another thing about fake blood, okay. but I will say there's some pretty good scenes of killing people in this movie. Um God damn it, heart. no, that's there's encroaching a... on the trivia. I'm gonna <laughs> Jeff, it's a fucking content warning. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's there's a uh, uh, stabbed heart. There's a slashed throat, and there's some other stuff in there. That it's like it's a, there's a lot. Oh, uh, uh, we got some implied animal death. There's a couple yeah, of sorry, pins in eyes. If that bothers you, there's a, mm -hmm. a pit of razor wire. If that bothers you, every oh, yeah. school has that. Well, yeah, what self I don't know why you're saying it's like a wire. barbed wire pit. Like, come on. That shouldn't bother you. Um, there is a dog. The dog does not die. <laughs> it does not die. The dog kills. The dog kills. <laughs> <laughs> so if that bothers you. The dog woke up and chose violence. Um, there is a scene in which a bunch of dudes in later hosen are dancing on some tables. If that bothers that you. That was pretty scary. It's pretty scary. Germ trigger there warning is Germans. A Oh yeah, yeah there's this a movie small, uh, theoretically takes place in there's Germany. There's a so. small, uh, stereotypically German boy. <laughs> he is yeah, so he was, stereotypically no, German. So uncomfortable. Boy, don't yeah. get involved he was with like, witches. He's like got the blonde bowl cut, yeah. later hosen. Yeah. Um, it's just... St he, he, sit he there, is he there for German boy? Why is he there? Yeah. There's no reason for him. We don't know. He's there to He's be a, a nuisance, and he does it well. He, he doesn't is, even do anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he like he gets bit by a dog and then he cries about it. He allegedly gets bit by a dog and cries about it. We don't, allegedly, we, never we do not see it. We don't see it. I actually theory of mine. I don't think it happens at all. No, I don't. I think they lied. You about hear the kids it, screaming the kid and dog later, barking. He doesn't though. have any stitches. Anyways, well, he is. That like, could be a. It could a be a witch error. thing. It could or, be yeah, a witch it thing. Could be a witch Speaking thing. of witches, we've talked about witches a lot. There are witches in this movie. Oh if occult God. themes bother you. 
Um, they take the as Jeff corrected me, the black sacrament and do magic yeah, at one thank point. You. So yeah, but really, they're only in the last fourth of the movie. So <laughs> really, really, yeah. Though. Beyond that, you just get scared because every now and then Goblin goes witch, witch, yeah, witch. Goblin really, really carries the movie. I think true. Or goblins, well, as they're well, yeah, called they're in the opening as credits. The goblins. That's not what the band is called. They're called goblins. Yeah. Um, I said true, but actually, I'm gonna say false because I think the score uh actually harms the movie a good bit. But that we can is talk a about fair that later. Criticism, as it is a fair criticism of all Argento movies. <laughs> See, <laughs> at least this one goes with have this one. A random Iron Maiden song that plays in its entirety. That's what I was twice. saying that See, earlier. <laughs> my, my thing with goblin scores is i would almost always listen to them for fun mm. but i don't know that i would score a movie with them that's fair it's like yeah. a bong ripper album almost i'm the exact I'm, opposite you're gonna bring bong ripper into this of course, you don't I'm even know who bong, bong ripper, ripper is into everything i love he's bong been ripper. tweeting about him for like a him week and a half. <laughs> she doesn't even she know she doesn't even know who bong ripper is anyways um, is that all of our content? You guys warnings? can't even see this. how yeah, hard I all rolled my eyes. That's all. That's about it. I actually it. heard your eyes rolling from here. I didn't even hear it through the call. It was just <laughs> through the window. That was Nina's eye falling out. She rolled it so hard. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, let's get into if it. That's all of our Emma? content warnings, Emma. Is there are there scary things in this movie, Emma? Is this movie scary? On um, a scale of one to ten, are there scary things? Is this movie scary? I'm. I'm Emma, gonna give it. Scary? I'm going to give it a three just for needles in the eyes. But what if I yeah, say, oh my witch. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Don't say that. A two. <laughs> Four. Final um, answer. <laughs> no, the, the needles in eyes is pretty creepy. Um, Certainly. I won't explain more than that because we're not in the spoiler break yet. But um, yeah, that's, that was a pretty eerie visual. Um, certainly, but other than that, like, nah, I mean, it's got ballerinas and shit, like, dancing, so you don't, you should be good. Ballerinas are scary, no, wow, okay. The only thing keeping any of them from going on a killing spree is malnutrition, you know, that right? (laughs) That's not a joke, it's actually true. I'm not laughing, it wasn't a joke, (laughs) (laughs) Jeff. You can't, you can't just say that. You can't just drop like a really serious There's problem a, in the middle of this. Yeah, that, that's a big problem in the industry. It really is. Just like oh um, everything God. else about it. I'm going to try not to talk about ballet because it makes me too angry. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, super valid. Do we want to want to get into that uh, spoiler summary? I think yeah, Jeff, we what should happens after get into someone that. dies in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> well, you, more people die if you can believe it. What? Oh, shit. I know. No. But not for the reasons that you might think. Spoilers, it's witches. Shit, I didn't think that was it at all. So I I have been puzzling since yesterday on how to best summarize this movie because the, the story itself, the plot itself, is so incredibly simple that it almost mimics like a folktale or something. It's really just girl shows yeah. up, figures out that some stuff is going on, does something about it, and leaves. And it's but it's like hard to describe the events of the movie because there are so many just goofy little non sequiturs like there's just Mm -hmm. so many characters and events that really don't figure into much of anything at all. Like they make compelling scenes, but they don't actually affect anything like the, you know, the whole thing with the piano player and the dog. Yeah, that doesn't affect anything. It doesn't touch the plot whatsoever. No, there's no reason narratively for it to happen. Also, why did it be like an hour if it just stuck to the point yeah oh yeah but then who wants to see an hour movie that's a tv special yeah that is a tv special dario argento would never he would never um why no i won't ask that um (laughs) you you do your spoil summary and then i can ask it later Okay, um, so my my best bet here was going to be reading through the plot synopsis on Wikipedia because I am too tired to think of anything else. Valid. So it'll be it'll be more detailed than my usual summaries are, and we'll see if we can get through it. <clears throat> All right. So Susie Banyan 
a young American ballet student arrives in Freiburg, Germany, during a torrential downpour to study at the co-ed Tanz Dance Academy. I probably pronounced some part of that wrong. A prestigious German dance school. She sees another student, Pat Hengel, whose name is never actually said in the movie. Uh, flee the school in terror. Susie is refused entry to the school and forced to stay in town overnight. Pat takes refuge at a friend's apartment and tells her that something sinister has happened at the school. Pat is then ambushed by a shadowy figure who stabs her repeatedly and drags her to the roof of the apartment building before hanging her with a noose by throwing her through the building's skylight. Ooh, should have mentioned that in the trigger warnings. A person is hanged by a noose. She is already dead by the time that it happens. Pat's friend is also killed after being impaled by falling debris while trying to alert other tenants to the murder. Susie returns to the school the next morning, where she meets Miss Tanner, the head instructor, and Madame Blanc, the deputy headmistress. They call her vice headmistress in the movie. I wonder why they say deputy on Wikipedia. I shouldn't be talking about that. Hmm. Tanner introduces Susie to Pavlos, one of the school's servants. She also meets classmates Sarah and Olga, her new roommate. Susie experiences an unsettling encounter with one of the school's matrons and Blanc's nephew, Albert, before passing out during a dance class. When she regains consciousness, Susie learns that Olga has thrown her out of her apartment, forcing her to live at the school with Sarah in the room next door. I think this summary is wrong, actually. I don't think that's the way that that happens in the movie. Anyways, while the students are preparing for supper one night, maggots rain down from the ceilings of their rooms due to a shipment of spoiled food in the attic, forcing them to sleep in one of the dance studios. During the night, a woman enters the room but is obscured by a curtain hung around the room's perimeter. Sarah, frightened by her hoarse and labored breathing, recognizes her as the school's headmistress, who is supposedly out of town. The school's blind pianist, Daniel, is abruptly fired by Miss Tanner when his dog bites uh, the, the little German child that we mentioned. Daniel is stalked by an unseen <laughs> force while walking through a plaza that night. His dog turns on him and viciously rips out his throat, gives him the call of the wild treatment. Sarah tells Susie that she was the one... You're putting some little, like, embellishments in here, Jeff, yeah. and you said you wouldn't. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> I'm just tossing them in as I think of them. I said I was too tired to think of anything better. That doesn't mean I'm not going to crack a joke here and there. Come on, it's me. Sarah tells Susie that she was the one on the intercom who refused her entry the night that Pat was murdered. She reveals that Pat was behaving strangely before her death and promises to show Susie the notes that she left behind. Sarah finds that Pat's notes are missing and is forced to flee when an unseen assailant enters the room. They pursue her through the school before cornering her in the attic. She escapes through a small window before falling into a pit of razor wire, like all ballet schools have, entangling her and allowing her pursuer to kill her by slashing her throat with a razor. Susie investigates Sarah's disappearance the next morning. Tanner tells her that Sarah has fled the school. Suspicious, Susie contacts Sarah's friend and former psychiatrist, Frank Mandel. He reveals that the school was established by a Greek immigrant, Helena Marcos, who was allegedly a witch. Susie also consults with Professor Milius, a professor of the occult. He reveals that a coven of witches perishes without their leader, from whom they draw power, just like in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. He says that in the movie. He looks directly into the camera while he says it. When Susie returns yeah, to I the like school, that part. she finds that everyone has left to attend the Bolshoi Ballet. After being attacked by a bat and recalling a conversation with Sarah about footsteps, she follows the sound of them carefully, leading her to Madame Blanc's office. Remembering that Pat uttered the words secret and iris the night that she was killed, Susie discovers a hidden door that opens by turning a blue iris on a mural in Blank's office. Susie enters the corridor and finds the Academy's instructors, led by Madame Blanc, plotting her demise in the form of a human sacrifice. Albert alerts Pavlos to Susie's presence. Susie hides in an alcove where she finds Sarah's disfigured corpse. Pursued by Pavlos, Susie retreats to Helena Marcos's bedroom. Susie finds Marcos sleeping, recognizing her as the headmistress by her labored breathing. She accidentally wakes her up by breaking a decorative peacock with crystal plumage, which is a <laughs> reference to an earlier Argento movie, actually. Um, mm. Marcos renders herself invisible and taunts Susie before reanimating Sarah's mutilated corpse to murder her. When flashes of lightning inadvertently reveal Marcos' silhouette, Susie impales her through the neck with one of the peacock's broken glass quills. Marcos's death causes Sarah's corpse to vanish. 
Susie flees as the school starts to implode. Madame Blanc, Miss Tanner, Pavlos, and the rest of the coven perish without the power of Marcos to sustain them. Susie escapes into the rainy night as the school is consumed by fire. Yep. Um, That's it. Not mentioned. What a great summary. Not mentioned in this Wikipedia summary is that um, they were drugging her food after after she has her like pass out during the dancing on her first day thing. They start. Yeah, that's like a super important. It's a very important plot point to just leave out. Maybe I could have done better by myself. Um, Can I see? That's the that's the plot point. I sorry. What? That's the plot point that I had a question about. Was why were they doing that? Why? I have no idea. Why were they doing that? Okay, good. What? Like why? Why her? Like once they got her into the school building after they cursed her to pass out and be in the building. It seemed like there was no reason to keep fucking with her like that. Okay, so here's my big right? thing is like, who all is involved in the coven? Everyone. Are Everyone. the students part uh, of the coven? Are some of the no. students yes. part of the coven? It seems not. I don't think right? so. Uh, is it like a recruitment thing? Because if it's yeah. a recruitment thing, I can understand why they would want Susie to stay there. But out of all of the students that we see, the one they would seem, and but I mean, also like the the lady, the strict lady, compliments Sarah or, or Susie early on for her steadfastness, and that felt like a recruitment thing as well, where she's yeah. like, "Oh, you're stubborn. That could be a good like attribute to capitalize on yeah. if we could get you to be part of our coven." But then they start drugging her and shit. And the only other student that I was like, oh, maybe they would want her to be a witch is Olga, and she doesn't even live at the school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, like, that doesn't feel like it's it either. I, I it, just don't I know think, what's going on. I feel like what, a, what I took away from it is the kids are there to generate money for the coven, and maybe you recruit a couple of people. But for the most part, the only people that actually are part of the coven are, like, the non-students and pretty much yeah. all of the non-students it seems to be all of the non-students yeah except like, for daniel it's i really German wish daniel boy. had been introduced he's earlier. part of it why is he part of it because he's you one need of a their creepy children. little boy to tug on the pocket of the big tall scary man and point ominously yeah True. and he did that well the kid has to be the kid of someone who's in the coven so Probably, I have to assume yeah. that's why. Yeah, well, it that's seems it seems that he's uh, the the it's child of like, when... one of the cooks or whoever, right? Yeah, yeah, but I'd she's like probably go... in the coven. But also, it's kind of like when, like, you're remember when you were a mom and yeah. like your kid was really young and oh, they couldn't yeah. go to the bathroom by themselves, so you'd bring them into like the bathroom with you, right, of course, and help them. It's kind of like that, but with cult shit. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to go on a, on this home. on that note. Yeah, no, no, you, get, you can't get a babysitter. No. Yeah, no. I would like to go on a little rant, um, for a moment here. Okay. Absolutely. Um, about shit that I wish they had brought up earlier or gone into more detail with or resolved in any way, mm-hmm. rather than spending so much time on someone screaming and writhing either in a wire pit or against a bat. Um, sure. The Daniel if being they... introduced earlier would have been nice because he is introduced just before he's kicked out, but he's clearly present in earlier scenes because we have mm. other scenes where they're practicing, but no attention is drawn to his existence until right before he gets kicked out. And I wish we had just seen him once um, in that first ballet like scene. I think you missed a scene. I was gonna say, Did I? there is a scene there. where he like shows up at the school the same as he does on the day no, that but the attack that's... happens, and everyone like says is there hi really? to him on his okay. way in. Because mm-hmm. I only remember the scene where that happens the day that he gets kicked out. Uh, oh no, no, he shows is there up. Another one? He shows up before that. Okay, as well. cool. So I I retract that. I do not retract that. I wish that the loose end of the like romantic subplot was tied up in some way. Um, they spent or a lot of time on it for it to just it, not right? matter. Yeah. Yeah. They set it up about as they, well as they set up anything in the movie. I mean, she was only there for four days. There was no way to wrap it up. Then why have it be there? Um, when you could spend you know that how time young pe- Nina, you know how young people are and their young love. That's true. And- yeah, I know you're playing devil's advocate right now, but, uh, they could have spent that time developing relationships between Sarah and Susie. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, that would have been really nice because their relationship supposed to kind of be the crux of it. And maybe we would have been able to understand more of Su- Sarah's motivations when she does things on her own or blows up at Susie for different things. Right. Um, uh, or just like her like backstory in general. It'd be nice to have uh, whole Olga. characters, right? It would be nice to have, yeah, because Susie's a good character. Like I enjoy Susie. She seems she seems fine. Like she doesn't. She she's fine. She's not like super well rounded, but she's there. Sarah's also there. Um, but none of the other characters are developed in any way, and that's frustrating. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the the drugging the food obviously. What the heck? For yeah, what it's reason? Just what's going on? Why is this happening? Why Why does she get a nosebleed that leads to her being continuously drugged? Because they use her like her fainting on the first day as an excuse to further. Oh, her her. fainting on the first day was 100 percent a witch thing. Yeah. But for what reason? Because she stood up to them. Okay. They wanted her on premises and then she said no. And Mm. they're like, oh, okay, up to you then. And then as she, like, tries to walk down the hall, she's getting, like, worse and worse and worse. And then uh, she yeah, passes yeah. out and they have all her stuff there. Yeah, okay, you get that, okay. you get that, right, that really that. cool scene where, um, uh, what's her name is, like, the, the one cook is, like, sitting in the doorway with that knife and all the light reflecting off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, witch. 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 And casts her spell upon main character. Yeah. Um... Uh, I, I want to give props. A, my last thing, last last thing, real okay. quick. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Last thing <laughs> is that I just wish that the uh, like we talked about, I wish that any information about the whole witch thing, like actual actual information, not just goblins little inserts, yeah, would have been a, done a little early on because it's like we're doing this investigation, and then the reveal just comes with Sarah going like it's witches, and then everything else comes yeah. after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's, that's my last thing cause like I was like okay when are we gonna learn about the hairy invisible killer um yeah never, for was most that, of them was a very hairy invisible killer yeah. very hairy invisible killer um he's just an arm apparently but so I, hairy. I wanna yeah. give I wanna give props to main character because when she was passing out I don't know if you guys noticed I definitely noticed even while passing out, she stayed on her toes for a very long I noticed time. that. She yeah. did. She was staying that's up a, there. She that's was a really doing her best. Yeah. She um, also contributes a surprising amount to Sarah's like planning and investigation while falling asleep. Yeah. I, yeah. I could say a lot about this movie, I think, but I am very interested in fun facts and trivia. That's right. Oh, I am. Yes, are. we've been encroaching I infringed on, it. on so many of those, and now Jeff will kill me. But luckily, you can hear the trivia first. I may have hyped it up a oh, little wait, bit before, too much. I'm concerned now. <laughs> before you jump into trivia, can I say one thing? What's that? I suppose. I forgot. It depends on the I thing. Took, I took two notes at the very beginning of this movie. <laughs> Uh, one was love the beginning of the creepy music starting and stopping as she's leaving the airport. Very funny. And then the mm-hmm. second one was after she leaves the airport, she's trying to hail a cab. So she runs out in front of a cab, mm-hmm. causing them to probably slam their brakes. But it's this terrible storm outside. And the note I wrote was the gall on this girl to run out in front of a cab to get them to stop for her. And then be like, can you come out into this crazy storm and help me with my two <laughs> small bags that I can obviously handle picking up myself? Right. Uh, I, I just, love how the man just stares at her. Yeah. She's like, it, okay. It screamed American privilege. <laughs> um, that and poor it cab didn't... driver goes through so much for her. I like yeah. how she kept trying to wave down taxis that didn't have their light on. Like yeah. they're clearly just going and she just keeps jumping into the road. She's running like and they're all like, the way Yo. across the lane too, which I've never yeah. hailed a cab, but yeah. I'm pretty certain that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. Um you just I, do the taxi. She did not start off as a sympathetic main character for me <laughs> for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um i also did like when she was in the taxi and she was trying to pronounce the name of the German village or town. Mm-hmm. She kept saying it and 
she says it, she says it, she shows the guy a piece of paper, and then he's like, oh, and then he says it the exact same way. Yeah. It's so that. funny. <laughs> okay, so I think I that may be intentional, but I'm, we can get to that later. That See, no, I think, that one, no, I feel no, like I, we're going to get to that now, because I think that that's one of the lost in translation moments, where, like, they had another person speaking English say the line for us, instead of a German person. And I think that that was like I I do believe that that is possibly a lost in translation thing. Possibly could be or or I have heard Here, that over scene route. read a little bit differently in keeping with the story being so simple, mirroring sort of a folk tale kind of a feel. In keeping mm. with that, I have heard that opening scene read as being sort of like um like fate trying to warn her to stay away. Because she mm. talks to the guy about the rain and he says it's only been raining for like a half hour, which means that it started raining when her plane landed, more or less. Mm. And then yeah. she can't manage to get a cab and the storm is horrible. And then the driver is a dick when she does get a cab. Uh, and then she gets turned away at the door, but nobody knows by who or why. Nobody knows why. Yeah, like all of that fits together into this like just fate trying to keep her away from the place kind of narrative. And then that mm -hmm. uh, almost gets backed up later on in the building burning down scene. The way that like, have you noticed in that scene, everything that gets destroyed happens like in front of her to open a path for her to get out? Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing, yeah. potentially, if that's the way that you're reading it. I yeah, like I'm... that read, actually. I, I choose to read it that way. It's, it it's a sense. more fun read of that opening scene, right? Uh, anyways, though, getting into the fun facts. That would trivia. mean that the music... The music is diegetic. One hundred percent, and so vibes. is all the lighting. <laughs> also, um, that means that the reason the music sounds like the Beauty and the Beast, um, like rose petal music, it or does. does it? Like that means that that's intentional too, because uh, because uh, oh, it definitely tail. came out before. Um, oh wait, which one? I don't know which one came out first, but it just reminds I, me a no, lot of the Beauty really. and the Beast. No, music. So spirit Suspiria came out first. Beauty and the Beast came out. Can't like believe Beauty and the Beast ripped off this movie. Firstly, um, I but, don't like, remember that... enough of any of the music in Beauty and the Beast to know that. Actually. Okay, not important. Does the rose? I think it's like in the beginning. Like yes, oh. yeah. like the the early like monologue scene with mm -hmm. the with the enchantress has borderline the same like twinkling. Riff. It's the same instrument, oh. if memory serves. Interesting. <laughs> it's not important though. Give me a okay. Jeff. Give me. A fun fact. So Nina was talking a little bit earlier about how this movie felt very stage play-ish in the way that the sets were designed. Well, just about all, well, all, literally all but three scenes in this movie were shot in a studio in Rome. That makes sense. Three scenes were shot actually in Germany. Those scenes Was one are, the giant courtyard shot? Because that was so hot. Which one? That was such a hot shot. The courtyard shot. Courtyard shot. That was um, hot. Where Daniel dies. Where Dan. Yeah. That is one of them. Yes. Oh, it was so hot. I love that zoomed out shot so much. Right. Um. So that scene. It's so empty. Uh. And the the opening scene. Uh. The airport. I think. Mm hmm. Um. And the scene where she meets with the psychiatrist in front of that green building that matches his jacket. Also, fun fact: that building, BMW headquarters. No way. Really? Uh-huh. I mean, I'm, it must be at the time, right? Cause at I feel the time. Like... I, I mean, I'm, it may not be yeah. now. I don't know. I'll check on it next time oh, okay. I'm in, what, Freiburg? I'm not going to out myself <laughs> as a bitch who's been places, but yes, it is different now. You've been to the um, BMW headquarters? I have. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> kinda... my dad's insane. Okay. <laughs> kind of bougie, I know, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll admit to it. All right. I wouldn't, but, you know. <laughs> um, Noah, you were talking about <laughs> colors, film exposure, fake blood, etc. This movie is one of the last full-length films to be processed in the Technicolor process. Huh. People who have watched well, you know. old movies a lot, Emma, I know you wouldn't know about this because you don't watch old movies. Yeah. Lots of times at the beginning yeah, of an old movie, they'll say color by said. Technicolor. And... If you're a kid, you don't know what any of that means. Well, before they had color film... If you're a me, you don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I only barely understand. Before color film, when they first started colorizing <laughs> things, it was literally just a process of, like, filling in all the colors on every individual frame and making it turn out right somehow? 
The Technicolor process mm. is one of the earlier ones, and as soon as other processes were developed, it was very quickly criticized for not having enough nuance. It tends to all be like big, bright, dominant colors, the kind of stuff that we see in this movie. And that's why Argento chose it, because he wanted the colors to be like nightmarishly vivid, because there are a number of scenes in this movie that are adapted directly from nightmares, actually. Oh, so he course. wanted it to that actually makes a lot of sense way. Right. The, the whole ending sequence is pulled directly from a nightmare that uh, Daria Nicolotti wrote, uh, had. She's the co-writer of the movie and at the time was married to Argento. Hmm. Uh, Imagine both of your, your names being Dario and Daria. Right. Like, it's, no wonder they broke it's up. It's not wrong, but <laughs> it is a little bit weird. And she she's the same one who gets killed by the chimp in Phenomena. That's her. Oh, oh my wow. god she also wow that she seems like also, a complex relationship oh my god in opera which came out three years after phenomena she's in that one as well and they were thoroughly divorced by then you know what happens her character is present mm. for all of five minutes and then she gets shot in the head <laughs> damn hey daria pretty if divorced you're, if you're out there and you're listening um Glad she got out of there, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Clearly, things were not great. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, oh, they continued goodness. working together after their divorce, so maybe they weren't horrible? I don't maybe know. Maybe they were still friends? We, we, we do not have the insight know. into that relationship I that I wish we did. Right? Yeah. It's just, it's an enigma. Anyways, though, he wanted to create this, like, overly vivid, um... Like he, he, he wanted it to look wrong. He wanted it to look the way that real life does not. So he specifically moved himself backwards in technology and used the Technicolor process instead of any of the better options that they had in 1977. And they actually did it with like one of the last existing machines to do it with. Really? Yeah. Real cool, you know, right? There's like a certain amount of like enjoyment that i gain knowing that someone went out of their way to use an like archaic method of doing something for the aesthetic of the archaic method like young frankenstein i have not watched it it's in black and white for no reason because mel brooks felt that it should be in black and white and everyone else who was like all of his bosses were like what no you can't do a movie in black and white right now because the market was not good for that. And he was like, no, it's going to be mm-hmm. that way. You can't do anything about it. I need to, I'm making Noah watch some Mel Brooks movies. I just don't like Mel Brooks movies. That's I am fine. making Noah watch Blazing Saddles, not not Young Frankenstein. But we'll probably watch Young Frankenstein. I think you'll like Young Frankenstein, Young Frankenstein better Frankenstein than Blazing is funny. Saddles. I haven't watched you Young Frankenstein so in a long time, though. So I don't know how it holds up. Mm, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I haven't watched either of them recently either. Yeah. I See, just I just remember... remember watching Spaceballs, and I was like, eh. I don't like Spaceballs. Yeah. Uh, that, you guys can Spaceballs come for me really on Twitter for that. I know that's a hot take it's, to drop yeah. on If you on like air, all the Mel Brooks stuff that's in it, then yeah, you're going to enjoy it. But if you're looking at it as like anything else, as a work of parody, it's just kind of like, eh. Yeah. Uh, you could have all. Did we mention the lighthouse in our black and white conversation here? Oh, or, I should have mentioned the lighthouse. <laughs> Because San- I just, just, I just, I just no, it was also in, in more of a square sentence. format for the same reason. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I was just going to try and divert us away from this to get back on topic. Yeah, you, you were saying that you only gain a certain amount of enjoyment from somebody using an archaic oh. film method. No, no, no. I gain extra enjoyment Ow. of the movie when you do something. Because it, it reminds me of... um. Like Rob Zombie being like, hey, I'm going to I want my movie to look like shit. Yeah. So I filmed in 16 slash eight millimeter. I don't know what the right. I don't know what the difference is. And then I blew it up to 16 slash eight millimeter. <laughs> and that's why my movie looks grainy as hell. So I guess you and probably like, don't want to hear about the use of anamorphic lenses in the making of Suspiria. Is that what made everyone so like blurry and like shifted every now and then? Uh, you you may notice that like in a couple of panning shots, the the edges of the screen on the left and right do a little bit of like a fisheye thing. Yeah, I think that is a relic of the use of anamorphic lenses. So basically, what anamorphic lenses are for, I learned this while learning about the Technicolor process. Um, basically, anamorphic lenses uh were a way to 
both simultaneously make the most out of the limited space that you have on like a tape reel and also Mm -hmm. get a higher resolution to your images. Basically, it films in it films a widescreen image, but stretched Mm -hmm. to being like square, just stretched up and down. So then you project it through an anamorphic projection lens, which is similar, but probably different, I think. Um, And it smashes it back down into widescreen and you get a higher quality image while using the entire space on the film rather than uh, having any amount of wasted space in between your frames. Interesting. Yeah. It's cool. I don't understand how it's necessary, but I think it's pretty neat. I do not either. I don't know if that was an uncommon practice at the time. It was just it was mentioned in the same sections as the whole Technicolor thing. So I read about it. Neat. Yeah. Uh, also, I um, I think I've got other stuff that I'm going to remember as we go along with more discussion about this, but, uh, with regards to the soundtrack, the Goblin soundtrack for this movie was actually written before the movie was made. That makes sense. It was made and then Dario built the movie around it, kind of. That does not make sense, but it also, man, fuck that guy. Right? <laughs> man, uh, <laughs> I get it, right? But I don't get it at all. You're the director. It was maybe it was. I want to talk about all the to do it. all the sick ass geometry in this movie. Fuck yes! I want to talk oh about that. Oh my god, the geometry! <laughs> because I love when Pat runs to her friend's apartment and she goes into the most hostile geometric building oh I've ever god, seen yeah, in my hard life. To look at mm-hmm. it's the scariest yeah. building, and the that shot in the back where there's the light stairway and the dark stairway uh-huh. shooting up in different directions. The steep, obviously, it's because it's painted on. It's like a painted backdrop. It's not real stairs. Yeah. But the stairs are so steep and clean yeah. and that everything in that lobby is so concerning. It's so overwhelming. And right? shaped. Okay. And then that big plate glass, like, stained window up top. Right, yeah. That's just, like, also all, everything is so cool. Okay, but get this. Also, and I did love you notice that. the wallpaper inside the apartment? Yeah. It's an MC oh my god. Machine. How could you how could you not notice that? It's just such cool stuff. Yeah, it's it's the it's busiest so apartment building in the world. Well, but like it's the a specific sensory nightmare. the specific yeah. MC Escher drawing that the wallpaper in the apartment is. It's the one with the bird. It's birds but it's fish. And depending on where you look in the picture, it's like more birds and it might be more fish. And you kind of like can't tell if the fish sections are the background on a picture of birds or if it's the bird pictures are a background on a picture of fish, you know, man, I love stuff like that. And it's it's perfect. It's a fucking nightmare apartment. Building. And then also and it's mm-hmm. uh, just just following the MC Escher thing. There's other wallpaper in this movie that is MC Escher derived. The uh, well, not wallpaper, I suppose the the mural on the back wall in the office at the school is those like doorways that lead to stairs that lead to doorways that lead to stairs. That's another M.C. Escher drawing. Mm -hmm. I really hated that back wall because it looks so unfinished because it's like white on cream with three colored flowers. But then you throw a bunch of colored lighting on it and it's okay. But they didn't. They didn't do yeah, it up until the end. Ironically yeah. enough, it's the only room in the one of like, the only whole rooms, movie yeah. <laughs> that doesn't get drenched in red light. Yeah, it does or get a little red and light. a little bit of green toward the end. But yeah, then when we're back in the uh, in the academy, there's all the uh, the the diamond shaped window plates all over the place <sighs> and like the black with gold trim, all the shapes that get like lit up by the harsh colored lighting. Uh-huh. It's so I love that stuff. I love that stuff so much. And I, I think the first time I watched it, I'm like, this is weird and I don't like it. And this time I watch it and I'm like, this is weird and I do like it. Yeah. You know, cause like, it's very uncomfortable to look at mm-hmm. every inch of the, the entire movie is very hostile to the senses yeah. in that regard. And I think it's a, I think it's a neat, it's a neat thing. Right. You know? Yeah. I really like it, especially with the, uh, you if you if you like pay attention to any of the shots of like the hallways in the school Mm -hmm. if you're more than like eight feet down the hall from something on a wall you can't see it as you look down the hall you can't tell what's doors and what's windows and what's just like curtains with like flowers or something you can't tell what is down the hall until you're like right next to it yeah it's cool it's weird it's It's scary um did i 
I know I have, but I can't remember if we've done it in an actual podcast recording or not. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm going to pretend we've never talked about it. Did I ever tell you, um, uh, you and Emma, about my like personal connection to this movie, uh, R.E. Me and Nina? Mm, yes. No, no. No, I didn't. You talked Thank about you, Have this I not... the last time we recorded. No, I didn't. I thought, no, I I, didn't. I thought <laughs> that we did. I don't, I don't know. remember. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> so... Uh, when I went to visit Nina for the first time, I went to the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle. Oh, I remember And there's that. a horror exhibit. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> there's a horror exhibit in the basement. And it's um, they had this like five minute loop running. I think it was promoting. Um, oh, who's that jackass that made Hostel? I have What's no his name? Idea. Eli, Eli Roth. Roth. Oh, it's Eli Roth. Fuck yeah, Dar- yeah, Eli it's Roth Eli and Roth. his uh, the history of horror thing that he was uh, doing. There was a little promo for that running and they were just doing like a special effects reel while some people talked over it. And there was this like two second clip from Suspiria in there. And it was the moment when Sarah comes out into the room with one of the uh, the metal stakes that had like holding in her hand and the pins in her eyes. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing in this movie that I like more than that scene. That scene her fingers look so long wrapping around the door to open it up yeah. and we already got that like sick close up of her in the casket so we like uh-huh. we know what it looks like but then she's walking around and the pins are still in her eyes and i don't know how they managed to pull that off because it doesn't look like there's anything holding them there yeah. but obviously and like can you imagine walking around like it do- doesn't matter how safe you are those are it doesn't matter if they're bendy. Those are still sticks in front of your eyes. You can't trip. Yeah. You're going to have a problem. Right. And she's just like walking forward and in doing that like little stumble walk. And it's such, I can't convey how much I love that one specific part of this movie and how that alone makes me like this movie. The rest of the movie is fine. Part. But like that part specifically unfortunately at the like the one hour 30 minute point so it's the very (laughs) end right at the end it's the best part of the movie Mm -hmm. it's so good it's so it's so unnerving i oh man i love that part so so much it's so i it's so hard to find pictures too i think go ahead i'm sorry when i was about like halfway through the movie maybe a bit past halfway and I was like, I must be missing something about what the fuck this movie is supposed to be. <laughs> so I went on Wikipedia and I actually read the plot because I was like, did I miss something? Like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, OK, it just picks up a lot. And the Wikipedia summary mentions, um, what is it, Sarah? Mm-hmm. Her um, death, like mutilated corpse, yeah. I think is what it said. Um, so yeah, I was pretty, expecting uh, it to be all like cut up and stuff. But mm-hmm. then it got to that part. I'm like needles in the eyes. Like, oh, God. Yeah. Like it was creepy. Yeah. Hundo that's P. I. I remember seeing. So I love special effects and gore um, in a way I didn't expect myself to when I was younger. Um, and I never really realized how much I wanted more of it always until Noah and I watched Event Horizon. Ooh. And I was furious at how short the cuts of all the cool gore was. I was so <laughs> mm-hmm. angry. I went and looked up slowed down gifs on Tumblr so that I could get a good look at all of that stuff. And I remember when Noah and I went to the to the museum and they had that scene and they showed it. It was so short. I was like, I want more. Show yeah. me more of that. And they they do in the movie. Like it's very much um they they got their money's worth out of that shot. Yeah, they make sure you get a good I, look at her. Yeah. Yeah. It's creepy with her moving around and everything. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. um, to take that and reference it back to the geometry thing that we were just talking about, did you notice? Um no. Susie sees Sarah's corpse in the hallway, enters the yeah. room. The door that she enters and exits through is not the door that Sarah walks through. Oh yeah. Sarah walks through a big double door. No. She walks through like a single regular door, but it's not the door that Susie escapes oh, through, yeah. and it's not the one that she enters with. Even though her body was in the same hallway that Susie was just in. 
Interesting. Just like how um, earlier in the movie, uh, there is a point where the camera follows Sarah. Well, you know, we we follow Sarah out of Susie's room and she goes through the hallway to somewhere else. And then the camera like stops following Sarah for a minute and it goes over to a door. The door opens and we enter Susie's room again, but not through the angle that the door to Susie's room opens through. We enter Susie's room from an angle that we know to be a window, actually. And also, we know that this door couldn't possibly lead to Susie's room because we just walked away from it and it was somewhere else. Interesting. Right? The more you and know. And I think that pairs that with the MC Escher stuff in a really cool way. I think it also pairs really well with that shot that we get um, when, what's her face, Pat or Pam, I don't remember. The girl who dies Pat. in the beginning? Pat. Yeah, yeah, when Pat's about to be killed and there's just the eyes outside of this like yeah. s- like window. I love that shot. That's so creepy. It's neat, right? I love disembodied eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also kind of like it like it's it's simple and it's obvious, right? But like I really like the way that the arm that kills her reaches just out of nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's there's nothing there. You it's look out very... the window where the guy should be and there's nothing there. It's mm-hmm. very dreamlike and and surreal in a way that Phenomena tried to be and wasn't. Yeah. Um, who, who did that first kill? Was that Dario Armgento? <laughs> Please. It was. It was the the Arm and Hammer guys, brother. Oh, okay. Arm and Hammer. Arm and knife. That's pretty sus, Spiria. Oh my god! I had to. So when I was gonna try and buy this on DVD earlier, I was gonna make this joke when, or just talk about this when Jeff was mentioning, or Noah mentioned that Noah couldn't spell Suspiria when he was typing it. Uh, shoot up. I asked the person to look up Suspiria for me, and they asked me how it was spelled, <laughs> and they're they're like Gen Z, and I was oh. like S U S. <laughs> huh. Sus. And my my old my ex manager from across the room, I could feel his like glare at me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if he wasn't such a fucking old man. Yeah, he needs to get with the program. They had to show him the Pinocchio clip of the. Oh. <laughs> They Why would they get... do that but to him? Father, when am I going to get to go off on my own? <laughs> got a whole world to see. We got to educate that old Whoa. man, dude. We got to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, but yeah, no, Suspiria is not that hard to spell, but when you first hear it, you're like, what the hell is that word? Right. Speaking yeah. of which, why is this movie called Suspiria? I am so There's glad you asked think it's... because I forgot to mention it. Why is not a book, right? Suspiria is a Latin word. It means um, like what? So this movie is derived and inspired not just from nightmares, but from an essay written by a man named Thomas de Quincey sometime in the 1800s, which was called Suspiria de Profundis, which basically means uh, a great sigh from the depths. And in this essay, there is a section where he sort of posits that in addition to there being three fates and three graces, there are also three like evils of some sort. And he calls these three women uh, Mater Suspiriorum, which means the mother of sighs, uh, Mater Tenebrarum, mother of darkness, and Mater Lacrimarum, the mother of tears. Uh, Suspiria is um, a trilogy. Uh, the first movie, Suspiria, is, you know, this one. The second one is Inferno, which is centered on Mater Tenebrarum. And then in 2007, he put out the third one, which is titled Mother of Tears. Now, you would think that since this one is called Suspiria and that, that like, you know, the next movies would be called maybe, you know, Tenebrae and then maybe, I don't know, Lacrimarum, rather than uh, Dario Argento having a movie called Tenebrae that is absolutely goddamn unrelated to this stuff. And the second movie is just oh called my Inferno God. for no fucking reason. I'd like to I have a that. word with this man. Right? This I man's understand a menace. I understand enough Italian that I think I could have it out with him. I I'd just go out. I would yell at him in English, but <laughs> I would learn Italian. I would yell the names of man. different pastas at him <laughs> <laughs> until he like stabbed me with a really shiny <laughs> pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah. Power move. Get your favorite horror director um, arrested for murder. <laughs> You're can <murder>. I, <laughs> He would can just I look at me question? and suddenly like a red light would flash across me and I'd be like, oh shit. 
It's like misery, but reversed. <laughs> Fire away, Emma. I'd love to hear your question. So when I was watching this movie and talking to Carson Druitt, um, he was saying he'd seen both this one and the newer one, and he had a really hard time with the original. Um, and he actually enjoyed the newer one a lot more. But apparently Dario Argento vehemently hates the new one. Does he? Okay. That um, makes sense. It's a lot. I was gonna ask less... if you guys knew why. So I would I'm gonna posit a theory that yeah. it's because the cinematography is unlike Argento's movie, which clearly is cinematography first, music second, everything else fifth. overall theming third, and then plot seventh. Um, mm -hmm. there's a lot more focus on the witches mm. in the sec or in the remake. It's a lot more clear what's happening. It helps to have watched the original going in, but you don't need to, yeah. uh, cause it's a lot more straightforward and it doesn't have the grand visual spectacle to it. Mm. And that's the gotcha. whole point of this movie. So he actually started being angry about it as soon as it was announced that a remake was happening which was in like 2013, I think. It was going to be a different mm -hmm. director and they were going to have like Natalie Portman play the lead. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, I don't think that was a, it. I, I like her, but I don't think that was a good choice. Mm -hmm. Didn't. So as the director of the original, does he not get to sign off on whether a didn't he lose a lot of his not? film rights? I have absolutely no idea. I don't follow film rights very closely. Fair enough. That makes sense. I feel like he so should have he, had some sort of say in it, think. but like, I guess after a certain point, maybe he just didn't keep the copyright up for it. Maybe. So he was just mad immediately. Yeah. Um, I, I got the impression he was mad about mad. the specific director. I'm not familiar with any of the particular guy's work, but it, like the, the titles didn't sound like the titles that you would expect from a person that you would, uh, you know, maybe trust to do Suspiria. I think he directed like okay. Pineapple Express or something stupid like <laughs> his previous movies, you know, House of Wax, <laughs> the Texas Chainsaw 2003 even, reboot. It wasn't even horror <laughs> movies. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think that that would be a bad choice if you can get someone who's just into surrealism. Right. Like you could and then find get the someone right to person. help with the horror elements like mm -hmm. you could make a director dream team out of like yeah. something like that. I think David Fincher could do but, it by himself. I was going to say, I think David Gilmore could do it, but I didn't mean him. I meant Roger Waters. David Fincher I with a Roger Waters I think David Schwimmer soundtrack. could do it. <laughs> David <himself>. Schwimmer. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, well. okay. So, I mean, honestly, like to remake a Dario Argento movie, really at the end of the day, you just need some red lights and you're good, right? Whoa, whoa you it. need blue lights too. God, it's like you didn't even and watch Jeff, it. You're getting real defensive about these blue lights. Would you like to hear Are more the about the blue lights in the room with us right now? <laughs> <laughs> it would be really funny if I just like flipped off my regular light and I had a blue light running right now. <laughs> I should have done that. Um, I have blue lights in I this room, did... but I'm not going to turn them on. <laughs> I, I did do a little bit of reading about like whether the colors actually represent things that might tell us more of what's going on in the movie. Would you like to hear about that? Yeah. I read two articles. Yes. I did not do any deep diving. I did one quick Google search and I skimmed through a pair of articles and I have decided I got no idea what's going on in this movie. <laughs> um, so, you know, I thought you were going to bring me an answer, the general consensus, but I guess I should not be surprised. Um, I was able to have this stuff in mind while watching it the second time. So I have determined that it is like three quarters of the way there. The mm -hmm. general consent. Did you just put a red light on your face? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god emma's in phenomena whoa <laughs> suspiria who this hot uh, new emma is sure to stun your friends so fun this fact like... there actually the red light on one side and blue light on the other side is actually referred to in the business as bisexual lighting and it is used extremely <laughs> liberally by dario argento in inferno Makes like sense. every is scene, Dario the Argento way that every scene Inferno? of Suspiria is like either red or blue, every single scene of Inferno, somebody has the red and blue on them. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Am I incorrect or do they do that a lot in Malignant as well? Or does it just feel like they do that a lot in Malignant? Well, they do a little bit. I know they do it a lot in Atomic Blonde. If you've seen that, they do it a little bit in Into the Spider-Verse. 
They do it a lot. In, uh, they do it a lot at my church. <laughs> um, my, <laughs> yeah, churches do it a lot. And I love that. They don't know, and I'm not gonna tell them. <laughs> Wait, you still go to church? <laughs> no, I, I, I do not. But uh, sorry if this is how you had to find out uh, anyone listening <laughs> who thought I still went to church. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was secret. Whoops. Sorry. It's not really a secret. Well, anyways, I look nah. Uh, so the lighting, bisexual thing. lighting. Um, not about the bisexual lighting, but um, the general consensus among oh. everybody seems to be. Uh, I again, I skimmed through two articles. I did not check with everybody. Um, the general consensus seems to be red represents evil, danger, violence, etc. Which is, <laughs> um, <laughs> Emma is leaning toward the red light right now for our listeners um um, so like that that comes intuitively enough when you watch it right because every time that the red is emphasized a lot it's because a character is moving further into danger right blue though nice good transition there she's more toward the blue light now um so the blue is where i take issue with other people's analysis because they seem the the people that I was reading from seemed to be under the impression that blue represented all the opposites of everything that red represented. So it's all about like goodness and safety and shit. But there's an awful lot of times that really bad things are happening and the light is blue. So I really don't think that's the right read necessarily. OK, green, though, this is where it gets cool. The green lighting. I'm going to give Emma a minute to pull one up here. <laughs> Green in this movie seems to represent knowledge, as evidenced by there literally being a green lightning flash at the moment that Susie remembers and like realizes the way to open the secret door in the office by turning the iris on the mural. Mm -hmm. At the moment that she realizes that, there is literally the entire room just flashes green with a thunderclap. And there's a couple of other moments where, like, um, The lighting, like where like Susie's asleep in bed and Sarah is like trying to talk to her, trying to plan and stuff. And as Sarah is having realizations, the ambient lighting in the room is like red, you know, a spot of red on the wall behind her. But as she's having her realizations, she is lit green or uh, that's lit. The scene with the doctor, uh, the lighting that's on Susie is all red. And the doctor is kind of lit green because he's a guy who knows Hmm. stuff, I guess, apparently. Also, I thought it was really funny in that scene, the way they're like forcing the water down her throat. And there's this red light shining on her. And someone says, oh, you've already got some color back. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I love that so much. Like, she, oh, you've got some color back in your cheeks. And she's just bathed 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 in red light. light. But like, yeah, in that scene, the doctor is lit green the whole time mm. then she so what yeah. this is telling oh, me get this though no, hold ahead. on just hold that thought for a second so i can keep okay, going I'm here. thinking the scene that's in front of the bmw headquarters where she meets with the psychiatrist and starts actually learning things the psychiatrist is wearing a green jacket that's the same shade of green as the building behind him because that's a place where you learn things right oh i thought it was because, for camouflage because she's there well he was probably trying to blend in because apparently they were having some kind of an academic mixer there in front of the building, not inside. Very odd. Yeah, it's what you do. It was nice weather, Jeff. Yes. It's Germany. It's Italy pretending to be Germany. No, that scene was actually Germany. That's the stuff uh, they do. Like, yeah. Anyways, Nina, what were you yeah. saying there? Oh, I was going to say what this is telling me is that um, I don't pay attention to movies uh-huh. <laughs> uh, it close enough to see what color things are. Because I I watched all those scenes all right, and there were certain times where I definitely know what color things were. Sure. But as you're telling me what... I'm having, like, false memories as you're describing <laughs> to me what color things were. I'm sure if I watched them right now, they wouldn't be the same way that I'm imagining them. Well, I also have um, the benefit I would be of... very susceptible to... I yeah. also have the benefit of having just watched the movie with all that stuff in mind. So, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I have a little bit of a tactical advantage on you. You do. I, I, I would be very susceptible to, to subliminal messaging and cult tactics, I think. Good to know. As someone who has almost no! joined a cult on multiple occasions. <laughs> and as I... I think I've all, all no, I don't think I've... I think I've only ever been almost part of one cult. Nice. Just once. You're smarter than so, I am, I apparently. I was part of a cult once. That sucks. 
That called Christianity. Aww. That's two of the same uh, horn, 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 horn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Same hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yellow light, though. This is where it gets really cool. Oh, man. Are oh, there are more lights? Yellow Damn. light so is many used lights. a lot less than any of the other colors, and the times that it does, it kind of sticks out. <laughs> Um, in the scene where Sarah is getting chased by whoever it was with the razor blade, uh, just before she climbs into the uh, razor wire pit, the way that she climbs into Can it is I through that window. Question. Yeah, go for it. Can anyone provide me with a reason for why there was a razor wire pit? And better yet, why she seemed to willingly jump into she it? She didn't realize yes, it yes. was there by the looks I of mean, things. Emma, if you have to ask why there's a razor wire pit, you've clearly never been to a European school. Why don't you have a razor wire pit? I have. I'm, Damn. I think I'm the only one here that has been to a European school. Well, then you must know That's all about incorrect. the razor wire pits. Come on. Like. I have been to I've been to a European school, but not a, ba- a European ballet school. So maybe that's the like thing we're missing here. Is oh, the I went element. to European ballet I school. I grew up homeschooled and we had a razor wire pit. So, yeah. <laughs> People say we were backwards, okay, but we face. had the pit. We had a razor wire pit, <laughs> we... so how backwards could we have been? <laughs> Man, that sounds like such a hick thing. It kind of does. Oh Got that God. razor wire pit. <laughs> I feel like I might know someone who actually really? has one. <laughs> Why? Because they're fucking weird. They just have a scrap metal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, okay. okay. Let, In and, that scene, anyway. <laughs> uh, she gets to the place with the razor wire pit by climbing through that window, right? When she looks across the room and sees that window... You've got that like blue light sort of square arcing up toward the window, and then the window itself is illuminated yellow. Mm-hmm. From my reading, it is suggested that yellow indicates an escape from the current danger. If you pay attention in the razor wire scene, after she's in that room, after she has climbed through the window, you look at the window again from that mm-hmm. other side, it's still lit up yellow. Oh, it's still an escape from the current danger. Yeah. Okay. There are times, though, that yellow is used uh, just on windows in general in this movie. But most convincingly, it is used on that um, glass peacock sculpture. Mm -hmm. When Susie enters Helena Marcos's room, that peacock thing is lit up all yellow. And then she knocks it over and suddenly things get lit up all like, you know, you know, blue and red the way that they are everywhere else but before she knocks it over it is lit up yellow because that's the thing that she ends up using to kill helena marcos interesting and there we go i think so but there is a scene where she's just talking to a couple of other students and we like it's that scene where like we don't see her face directly we're just looking at her reflection in a mirror the whole time while they're talking about like daniel's dog killing him and stuff there's a lot of yellow lighting in that scene and i don't know why Hmm. ultimately does it matter no i don't know what's going on in any of the movies so why does that stand out it doesn't but um i mean there's also like plenty of times when red light shines on Susie when Susie's just minding her own business well but it is always so, like, and if red light represents evil she's surrounded by bad people but is, like she kind of is and the reason the wine poured out looking like blood red was because the wine was evil naturally it was evil wine and the toilet was red because it was evil. Right. Well, yeah, she's pouring all the poison stuff into the toilet and the toilet is lit up red, even though nothing else in that scene is. I loved that. It was so goofy. I wrote down something about, oh, yeah, we all have our red lit toilets here. I can't wait for that TikTok trend. Oh. <laughs> the red toilet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you have a red toilet, go see a doctor. Noah's notes are going to be fun. And I don't want to like. I'm I'm excited. Much, but. For Noah's notes. I think notes. this is an, an episode for talking things up too much. I think that's that's the point of it. I don't know. True. These facts have been pretty fucking fun. Have we talked about the dialogue? Have we talked about no, the way that they did the dialogue in this movie? Dialogue. I actually have a couple of fun things. You guys got to talk that. about that. Yeah. Yeah, you so go ahead and say What was thing. it? Like half the half the dialogue was recorded in Italian and the other half was recorded in English yeah. and they only dubbed half of it over depending in- on where the movie was released. Which is why some people's dialogue looks a lot better than other people's dialogue. And sometimes you get someone who's like the girl who's getting like who's threatening everyone who was about to do a pillow fight. And she just like points at the two people and her mouth does not open. But we get this line of her saying, you stop it. Some of us are trying to sleep. Yeah. 
You know, there's there's a lot of obvious dubbing. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the reason why some of them are really like tight dubs because they're not always dubs. Yeah. Um. Uh. And on that subject, but also I feel like oh, go ahead. Uh, Argento. Because I think you're probably said, about to say what I'm about to say. Argento actually said on record that he was really disappointed that the Italian market wouldn't get to hear Jessica Harper's real voice. Because that was like part of the reason that he cast her for the role. He really liked her voice. He thought it was perfect for it. Interesting. Yeah. That's uh, Susie? Susie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her voice is like, um, she and, and uh, not to fucking bring it back to Heather's, but Winona Ryder's voice mm, yeah. are like, I really like the kind of, um, in like Carrie Fisher and Jodie Foster, I like the like deeper voices in female leads where they're not like, super because especially with in this movie all of the other like female voices of the students are pretty high pitched yeah. and then uh Susie's is very um the voice that young me ascribed to being a tomboy tm mm. and the voice that i like <laughs> wished i had as a kid yeah. um it's, it's like i i have always enjoyed main characters who just have that voice i don't know yeah. why uh do you want to hear something else that like sort of ties into that the thing about her voice. Yeah, go for it. Argento has also said one of the primary influences of this movie being the way that it is, is the old Snow White cartoon. Interesting. And mm. it's easy to think that that's because of like images, colors and such. But I think it also comes down to the casting. Because if you look at any of the important characters in this, it's very easy to imagine them all as cartoon characters. It is like if you yeah. look at it, Susie, it, it very much she is. very much has that kind of a look. She has a little bit of that like Snow White thing happening. She has the voice for that kind of character as well. But like every character that your attention is drawn to has kind of like a cartooniness about them. Like it's just it's a cast of people. I mean, Miss look. Tanner looks just like the uh, the Cinderella stepmother. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she does. Even like the um, I I hesitate to call them NPCs, but right. you know what I mean. Like the background characters, we don't get a lot of like the the male dancer who is not the love interest. Even yeah. like oh, the hairy guy. Yeah, yes. we see him a couple see, of times. He's we very interesting. He's very interesting to look at. He's very recognizable, yeah. even though he's not a main character. You can always tell it's exactly the same set of people mm. in every scene, even if you don't know who any of them are. That reminds me, actually, uh, one of the things I like about this movie versus the remake is this is a co-ed dance school, and in the remake, it is a girls-only dance school. Uh, not that the co-ed nature mm -hmm. of the school figures into anything other than having a half-assed no, love interest in it. But it does make it seem a little less like a blatant um Like this, you start going to this school and you're like, machine. this is definitely a coven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All girl boarding schools. There's never been a good story that's taken place in one like where the main character is happy. Every, every oh. all girls boarding school story I have ever read has been like, and they're all bullies and they're all sad all Becca the time. Becca actually has one that is not that. It was one that she read oh, when she was a was kid. It? It's called the. Um, is it the Princess no. Academy? Because that one's kind no, it's of better. Gallagher girls. They're spies. Interesting. I'll, I'll look into that one. Oh, they're spies. Uh -huh. Um, she, I think she has a box set of them on the shelf in our living room. Because I'm over mm. here with like Little Princess and like the Princess Academy and stuff Ella like Enchanted. that. Ella Enchanted. Ella Enchanted. Ella Enchanted. Does Ella Enchanted have a boarding it does, school? It I don't does. remember it, that. It's, she's only in the boarding school for like 10 minutes. Mm. But it sucks, I'm guessing. Well, naturally. Yeah. They always mm -hmm. do. Yeah. You know how boarding, boarding school is bad. Boarding. The slightly richer girl is always oh. mean. Yeah. Except for in A Little Princess where, well, I guess she doesn't know she's rich at that point. But she's so nice or and painful when she's rich. She's like the nicest. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awful. But here we have, anytime there's a nice, super nice character, it's boring. Uh, do we have anything? Any? Does it, we're, what, we're coming up on two hours here? Yeah, yeah almost, let's do yeah. Noah's notes. Let's do Noah's let's hit notes. Him up. Let's do Noah's notes. A lot do of you, this was fun uh, facts. Jeff, do you have like a, a theme song or something for Noah's notes this not week? Not one that's quiet enough <laughs> for me to not bother. Okay, my... let me let me hit you, <laughs> let, let me hit you guys up with a theme song. Wait, is it is it what so Noah just did? So it's very just... much. Nope. <laughs> it was gonna be that. 
But it's, you know, very Dario Argento, very Goblin, God. whatever. It's very loud, pulsing oh, music. Yeah. No, it's no. Uh, if you're listening to this episode, I hope it goes without saying you need to be when you listen to this, you have to be like sitting in a room that's lit up like all red or all blue or something. And when I say something yeah, that you haven't doing. heard before, you've got to turn on a green light to signify that you're learning something. I hope you yeah. knew all of that. <laughs> you gotta get the in. whole experience. It's required. Now you might notice a yellow light in your doorway saying to just shut this off and walk away from it. Don't do that. There's gonna be a barbed it's wire pit option. over there. <laughs> so <laughs> always. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those barbed always. wire. You pits. gotta watch out. Every good house should uh, should have one. Don't leave home you without it. Just gotta it. be aware. So do we have a Noah? Are we just going into Noah's notes? That was the note. That, no, was? that was the song. Okay, cool, perfect. Okay, Emma did it. Emma did it. Great, thank you, Emma. Uh, You're welcome right. for lending my musical expertise the team lately. This podcast. Um, Noah says the music only plays when looking at the door. It's so funny for so re- <laughs> for some reason that I don't think I la- I think I actually like laughed out loud. Yeah, I, was I don't like, know I why. Didn't I know for what, some reason, it's just it's, hilarious. It's very funny. It it's the the for some reason is why is yeah. he doing it this? happens later what's, in the movie the as well for that? So, like there's a couple of points where mm-hmm. the music will just start and stop with a door opening or a shot changing or something it's like great it's a choice um noah says ma'am the taxis don't have lights on that's why they aren't stopping the first time that i watched it i didn't see their signs at all i was like she's just trying to flag down regular cars no wonder they're all mad at her <laughs> like <laughs> <right>? <laughs> This is my favorite note from Noah because I want to hone in on a single word <laughs> here. He says, I like how the magic aspect of the school is downplayed here versus the remake. Like in the remake, we know there's witches running things, but in this one, we don't know that yet. So we get to enjoy subtle hints. The note directly before that says the little witch voice <laughs> echoing in the music as they come up on the Academy is a fun touch. <laughs> okay, yeah. Subtle was clearly a sarcastic note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that particular pair there um damn harry our man at it again he followed like and that one's preceded by like a paragraph long thing about how overdubbed movies feel timeless isn't it? and like like a weird time capsule not just of like the time they were made but the time that we remember watching them as kids like there's Ooh. like a whole thing about like nostalgia oh my and God, stuff you're here right um, I'm gonna. S- I'll, I'm gonna summarize real quick also and say that one of the things I love about overdubbed lines is you'll get people they clearly weren't recording in the room at the same oh, time, yeah. so you'll get like these outrageous reactions to something where someone said, "Oh, hey, Susie, how are you doing?" And then someone in the back will say, "I can't believe you're asking her how she's doing." Yeah. And it's like, "Oh, you're very right. I'm sorry." Yeah, and it's like it's obvious that no one was like around each other at this time that these were recorded, so no one knows what the tone of the conversation yeah. is. Very, the dubbing very on the doctor funny. is like, that like when, one. like he was. Yeah, not he, even why is there. he so cheerful? Like, what in the world, he's, he's like act- so the guy perky, in and the for movie what is reason? <laughs> acting weird also, but the, whoever it was that dubbed his voice was being even weirder. <laughs> He's yeah. like, oh, well, oh, it's yeah. all when you right. Drink wine, and it's like, it what are you? turns to blood instantly. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love him for that. I'm going to use Honestly, his version of science. One of the best dub moments, though, was there are several fellow Americans here. And then in the back, you just hear, hi. <laughs> well, my favorite like, is. Yes, thank you, my dub favorite voice. translation <laughs> moment is when the psychiatrist says, would you tell her something about the mysterious? <laughs> <laughs> she has an interest in the like the mysterious or the mad or magic or witches. witches. In your favorite subject, I think they dubbed so the weird. word witches separately from the rest of the line there because there's like a pause and he says it in a different tone. It's weird. Argento was just like, maybe it's not obvious enough. <laughs> Noah says, Miss Tanner reminds me of that one Bond villain. Which one, Noah? Oh, um, she was like. She was some, you know how Bond villains toe the line between being Russian and German, depending on like the era the movie was ma- made in. Yeah, little, she's yeah. like a stereotypical Russian slash German. Oh, I know the one with big the big buff the, the woman, poison spike in her shoe. No, I wasn't even thinking of oh, her, but she's her. a better one. She's Russian. 
Uh, no, I'm thinking of the one she's like super beefy and like beats the shit out of people. Okay, so this I is clearly I think she might have been in the Lazen Bee. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I feel like I'd rem- remember that because I actually remember most of the Lazen Bee. There are several so Roger Moore's. I don't. Okay. Um, this is not a James Bond podcast as much as I wish it were. Lazen Bee uh, is the name of the actor who played Bond in that one movie, and he's generally regarded as being the worst one for any of our listeners who are not familiar. The Lazen Bee. Uh, the Lazen Bee is Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah. He got oh, the part the because he lied about being an actor. Let's keep moving. And he dressed exactly he like He stole uh, one Sean of Sean Connery. Connery's suits and wore a fake watch and said, you've found your new Bond. And they were just Did so you know that? in awe of his confidence that they hired him on the spot, regardless of the fact that he had no acting experience. This is not a James Bond. No, podcast. but this is but good trivia. This is good trivia. <laughs> I can't mention Lazenby and not talk about it. It's the only good trivia about him. Yeah. He's my Bond. Anyway. Anyways. <sighs> Dalton's my Bond. I have decided. Oh, Dalton's way better. He's I probably the why. best one, honestly. But like Lazenby, though. Let's not talk about Bond anymore. Okay, I'm, getting, talking about I'm actually getting, <laughs> getting going to get so distracted. Um. Imagine expecting a new student, but not making sure you have a room for her. Couldn't be me. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so insistent on her staying there, but then being like, I'm sorry, we don't have a room a for late. you. And then they were like, oh, and you're then, right. and, and it's like, we don't have a room. You're going to have to stay with Olga or whatever. Yeah. And Olga's like, yeah, this is dope. I actually really enjoy spending time with you. I'm sorry I was mean at the beginning. And then I don't think like, that that was true. I then, think she just wanted money. But then we never see Olga again. Yeah. What the never, fuck? She no. died. Olga died. Olga's just gone after She's that. Gone. I don't even want to ascribe to her a motivation on whether or not she was just in it for the money because she wasn't around enough yeah, for me to there. know for sure. Because she was actually very normal with Susie about like the having a crush on the boy and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, other like, than the whole maybe... uh, people with S names or snakes thing. <laughs> She was picking on Sarah. Susie just happened to be there. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't even know what that is. I, some of these notes I'm a little confused by, but that's just because I don't know what part of the movie they were talking about. Um, Noah says, I love that this movie has a co-ed school. Also, all the guys are hairy as hell. Um, They're be- Italian. Be nice. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the one who wrote that shit. You dude. didn't need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a note for me. <laughs> um... Noah really enjoys the character of Miss Tanner. He brings up a lot of her um, presences and what he refers to as an auxiliary villain. Um, He says, like, on one hand, she could just be an overpassionate teacher. But on the other hand, she's simply the worst. Yeah, I I don't know. She's honestly, she's a great setup as the villain in the beginning of the movie. And then it turns out she's not even like the secondary villain. Right. (laughs) Um. We didn't talk about the maggot scene at all, but I'd like to to bring up just how viscerally like they set that shit up just by having uh, up to the reveal. Everyone's just kind of like dusting yeah. themselves off and they're like, what the fuck is going on? And then when they figure out that it's maggots and everyone starts losing their mind, so it's gross. like, oh, my God. That's like one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Man, them walking through you the maggots guys... and you just hear them crunch. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole little shot really effectively. You guys think? the maggots ever like show their maggot friends this movie and they're like look look look, look I, i'm there and they they point themselves out yeah i hope <laughs> i hope they, they deserve do. they have to. little maggot viewing party <laughs> yeah are we making maggots cute this <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of weird kind of weird of you um Noah says, what's the excuse again? There's just like a huge amount of raw meat upstairs. It's like their beef storage chain. <laughs> yeah, really that was sense. before they actually got upstairs. I couldn't remember. And it's just like, it's a bunch of the preserved thing, meat. The thing is, you were correct is the thing, Noah. No, you but it was right. preserved meat. It wasn't just raw meat. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> Where's the beef? Um, the, it's in a box it's full in of the maggots. Beef storage chamber. <laughs> the uh, the maggot scene. Um, Becca watched parts of this movie with me. She wasn't like paying close attention, but you know, I had it on, and she was in the room. Um, in the maggot scene, when like the first scream hits and the music like punches in real loud, she just started laughing because it was just <laughs> so goofy. Um, maggots. <laughs> Noah says, 
Counting teacher steps to find where they hide. Just late, na- just late night hobbies. No, that's just what girl sleepovers are like. Um, that's just how girl sleepovers go. You would not know. Yeah, I, sorry. I'm my sorry sleepovers were watching Walker, Texas Ranger because I only had one friend. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, no. Sometimes it was watching that Harrison Ford movie. Um, where you he's know on what? A plane. We did have a second type of sleepover, and it was let's be late night hoodlums. No, come on, guys. I swear it would be fun. No, come on. Let's start a fire. I don't know. Let's like do something. Come on, guys, for real. And I was out there actually starting you, the fire. <laughs> Every did sleepover. Did you guys hmm? have sleepovers watching 1995's Sabrina, starring Harrison Ford, Julia no. Roberts, the one where he's on a plane, and, uh, um, snakes on a plane, and no, not Greg snakes Kinnear. On a plane. It's um. Harrison Fuck. Ford it's, on he's, a plane. He's the president, and Gary Oldman is an airplane a called Air Force terrorist. One. That was Air what Force it was called. One. That's the one. I kept thinking. Anyway. I was just thinking Joking the president's plane, and I, I was I like, it. I know that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, sleepover stories aside, uh, we've got. Noah says, um, I forgot the dog killed him. I thought it was the gargoyles. I'm, s- <laughs> I'm sorry, the gargoyles were clearly teased far before the dog Is was. That, what's, like, what's supposed to be happening there? Are we supposed to have been seeing well, the, the point of view of a gargoyle yes. flying over him? Yes. Uh, two, gargoyles, two gargoyles, actually, because you'll notice the one shot shows that the gargoyle is missing on one building, and then the other shot... Oh is uh cropped down so you can't see the gargoyle anymore but it's implied it's not there and then the dog kills him and he was blind so he didn't see any of that there was no point to the gargoyle wild i'm tearing up yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah we've got noah noah says he really liked the way the next slice looked pork colored Mm. (laughs) yeah the way that you phrase things. I wish we could find out. Some of my notes just. I fall in love all over again every time that I read these notes, you guys. Gross. See, every now and then Nina finds a note that I didn't finish or has a typo. <laughs> like this one that says, poor Saia, <laughs> S-A-E-A, instead of yep. Sarah. Wow. I remember so... that character. <laughs> or this other one that says, ah, yes, which is an important pillar <laughs> of psychiatry. <laughs> Yeah, that guy yep. says that he thinks um, witchcraft is an important pillar of modern psychiatry. What the fuck was he on? He does, and that, and he means he means witches existing and practicing magic, not people who think they're witches but aren't. Yeah. He means literal, actual witches who are actually real are important to modern psychiatry yeah. because Honestly, the way that they use magic reveals something about the human psyche. I gotta be honest, if I had a witch that I knew was a witch, 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 witch in my life doing actual visible magic and hurting me, I think that's going to be a really important part of my psychiatric eval. I suppose so. Yes. So maybe he Witches is right. Witches stand mental health. Yeah, Helena Marcos, yeah. Uh, mental health advocate. <laughs> um. Also, I love, just to fast forward to the end of the movie, when Helena talks, how she says her own last name wrong. And it doesn't sound Greek at all it anymore. Not, she butchers. My I name. just love her um, voice. I want to so meet. So goofy. I, I just. I want to really talk goofy. to Argento about the thinking in casting that voice actress, just because I the way that she sounds is not what I would ex- no, And and the dialogue itself, I guess, also is just not what I would expect from that character. Hmm. Yeah. I. I have I have nothing to say. I have no words for that. Um, Noah's last note is just about how much he loves dead Sarah, which we've already talked about. It's her weird, I love dead her Sarah. weird fingers and her weird walking. She's Very good. I love dead um, Sarah so much. But yeah, the Watch the, the, movie the important last note I will end on is love a good water gargoyle. I love I love the the drain pipe that just had a bunch of gargoyle heads spewing oh, out yeah. a little bit of water. I love vomiting gargoyles. They're great. Prime gargoyle. So fun. So much fun. So that's Noah's notes, everyone. That's Noah's that's notes. That's my notes. Yay. And that's... I think those were some good yeah. notes. And that's the episode by the looks of things. Yeah. I yeah. think so. Unless we've all got other stuff um, to talk about. What? What's the next thing we're doing? It's Noah's turn. Yeah, I'm actually pretty excited to come in with this one. Um, 
I've been thinking about using this on the podcast for ages now, and I just never did. Uh, but we're going to be watching a movie called P2. P2. It's going to be the end of my mini run of uh, of single location horror. You're done with single location because I think uh, only because I have other movies that I'm really stupid excited about, and I can't watch them or make you all watch them if I'm still running a once a month single location miniseries. This would take a long time, yeah. Yeah, but this one I'm pretty excited about. It it was a single location trilogy. There you go. ATM, whatever I did, or Splinter. Oh wait, no, it's ATM, and then what did Emma pick that I said was an honorary entry? Splinter. Yeah, ATM hijacked Splinter. This one, it's perfect. It's perfect. (laughs) Wow, Um, we did this on purpose, guys. But yeah, so P two. It is about. It is about um. This lady who's working late on, I believe, Thanksgiving oh my God. I and the parking lot attendant. Yeah, the parking like structure attendant is really weird and is very clearly into her. And it's really uh, unfortunate. And he kidnaps her for Thanksgiving dinner together because it's so romantic. That's because really she was sweet giving him. him the same vibes too, right? And oh, they... good. So content warning right off the bat. Exactly. Uh, content you... <laughs> warning. We got some stalker action. I don't remember if there's any like blood and gore in this movie, but there's definitely some creepy stalker action. So that's that's the big warning for this okay. one. I think honestly, anything else in it, um, you're pretty much getting what you got. I don't even know if there's more than two people in this whole movie. It Ooh. might just be two. It might be three. Very small I... cast. I like that. I but kind super of, small cast. I kind of love the diversity of stalker horror um, because we've had Creep, which was two men, and now we're doing P2, which is uh, a man and a woman. And then there's Misery, which I mentioned earlier, which is a woman stalking a man. Mm. I think it's very interesting that there's like all different kinds of like arrays of these situations. There's a Even lot of though, diversity to stalker yeah, horror. Yeah, weird. It, like unexpected, honestly, because you'd think that it would mostly be um, the setup that Noah's described. Yeah. Um, but I think it's cool that there's more than that. Yeah. Uh, it just occurred to me just now. It's anyway, cool that stalkers uh, are so inclusive. Yeah, honestly. Uh, let's, Thanks, stalkers. Let's, uh, let's talk about us, though. Uh, no one get the idea that we like stalkers. We don't. Yeah, stalkers bad. Don't stalk me. I would and not like it. if you want to hear me talk about how much I don't like stalkers, I'm not going to do it. Not because I didn't like stalkers, but because it's a weird thing to bring up. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Bubba the Bad, B-U-B-B-A-D-A-B-A-D. I think Noah's being really cagey about the whole whether he likes stalkers or not thing because he's refusing to publicly <laughs> condemn them. Um, in any case, if you want to hear me say dumb <laughs> bullshit about my brother you can find me on twitter <laughs> and uh if you want to hear me uh if you want to see me talk about powerlifting you can find me on instagram at the hammer of jeff and if you want to not see me post anything you can find me on tiktok <laughs> my t-shirt well, obviously, I don't like stalkers. Why are you asking? Is sure raising a lot of questions answered by the T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me, Nina, on Twitter at Nina Wolverina um, or at House Usher Rises, where I talk a lot about Malignant um, as well as some other horror related stuff. And I retweet things and it's where I get all my horror news. Um, so, yeah, tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> that sentence absolutely ran away from me, but that's where you can find me. Love it. Uh, and I'm Emma, also known as Emma Panada. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Emma Panada. On Twitch, I run various TTRPG games. On Twitter, I sh- largely shitpost. Um, I'm also writing a TTRPG called All the Witches, and I have a Twitter for it. Um, it's twitter.com slash all the witches underscore. So if you want updates on how system development is going and all that, every once in a while, I post updates there sometimes. Um, I also run the podcast Twitter, which is at Casual Horror Pod. So if you want updates on when new episodes are dropping or sometimes I just comment random things on people's tweets using that account, um, you can follow us there. And it's a fun time. but yeah, thanks so much, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate you, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.
goodbye. <laughs>